Welcome to Alex Juice Aquarium. Today I have another update on the 1600 gallon system. I want to give a brief overview of what's going on on the 720 gallon, the 480 gallon reef behind me, the fish room, equipment. There's been a few things that have changed. I got some new additions to both tanks and also had a couple of minor equipment glitches that I want to talk about. So I think it's really important to talk about all the things, good and bad, that happen in aquariums on a week to week basis. Let's start off by talking about the 720 gallon tank. Now this tank's been doing great. There's still hair algae in this tank, but it is significantly less than it's been. I've transferred all five of the long spine sea urchins that were in the 480 gallon reef over to the 720. And that's made a pretty big impact on the hair algae in here. It's still growing, but it has really slowed down. And I just tested my nitrates and phosphates in the 1600 gallon system and they're both still reading at a zero level. Now I know that's not the absolute truth because there are definitely some phosphates and nitrates in the water available for this algae to grow. On the plus side though, the urchins have been making a really big impact in this tank. I'm just going to slowly let them go through the tank and consume as much algae as they can. I haven't added another UFO refugium light yet. I might do that next month depending on the status of this tank. Overall the algae is not that big of a problem in this tank anymore. I'd say about two thirds of it are pretty clean of hair algae on the rocks and every night the long spine sea urchins tend to make a little bit more progress on it. I might go through and do one more manual removal see if that finally gets it defeated in this tank. The main thing though is that if the hair algae is going to grow in the displays I'd rather have it in this display rather than the reef tank with all the corals. As far as new fish in the 720 gallon tank, I have a couple of new additions. I haven't talked about new fish additions in a while, but I felt it was time. There's two new fish in this tank. The first is a harlequin tusk. I really love these wrasses. They have a really mean look to them with their big opposing teeth and their face, but they're really not that aggressive of a fish. They're relatively peaceful. They're always actively swimming around the tank. Now when I added this harlequin tusk, as I suspected, there was probably going to be a little bit of aggression even in a tank this size. The fish was added by itself, which of course also adds another layer of aggression to that single fish as opposed to it being spread out over a few fish. But I was hopeful that it wouldn't be too bad since the harlequin tusk isn't really close in relation to the other species of wrasse in the 720 gallon tank. There was one wrasse in particular though, which really surprised me. But the clouded wrasse did not want anything to do with this harlequin tusk. It was pushing and chasing and keeping the harlequin tusk kind of tucked up into a corner. Which isn't a huge deal for this tank because it's got a nice big gyro brace. Everything's blacked out. It made it a nice dark area that had some decent cover for the fish. And even with it being pushed into the corner for the first couple of weeks, the harlequin tusk was still coming out and eating from day one, which I thought was great. I did pick this fish up from my local fish store, Reef Plus, so I thank them for finding it. And this fish has just been doing great. They love a lot of big, meaty foods. Hey, this harlequin tusk has actually been getting up where the puffers come to feed. It's been a lot of fun watching this really colorful fish swim throughout the 720 gallon tank. The second fish that I added to the 720 gallon tank was a Niger trigger. Now I don't have any other triggers in the tank at this time and I thought the Niger trigger would be a great addition for a few reasons. One, my wife saw one and some videos online and at a store and she just fell in love with the fins and the streamer on the tail and she just really wanted to get one of those. I said it wouldn't be a problem. Niger triggers tend to be a fairly peaceful trigger and they tend to do pretty well in tanks. I really love this fish because when you look at it, you know, it has this kind of green glow to the black. And when you look top down on this Niger trigger, it is just a beautiful fish. And again, this one I got from my local fish store reef plus a great addition to the 720 gallon tank. Overall, the tank's been doing great, but I really want to talk about the puffers in the 720 gallon because I can't really talk about this tank without talking about the puffers. I will be making a special video just on the care for puffer fish. I'll talk about the porcupine and the dog face. I've kept these puffers in the past. I've also cared for them at local fish stores for several years. And 
keeping two together in a, a private tank for the first time, I've definitely learned some interesting facts about keeping these fish together, some do's and don'ts. So look for a future video, I'll do another fish focus, similar to what I did with the Royal Gramas, except I'll focus on the puffers. The only minor issue that I've been having with the 720 gallon tank is the lighting. I have three AI Vega colors, and you might notice in the video, every now and then, you see kind of a little flicker of light. These lights have been just kind of giving a, a random flash. I'm not sure exactly what it is for, and I'm thinking it might just be the old wireless controller for these lights is starting to go. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I haven't really experimented around. That's the only minor thing that's been going on with this tank as far as annoyances and little issues. The Rossmont waiver pumps have been doing a great job. I'm really thinking about adding a couple more of those pumps to this tank in the future. And the couple of corals I have in here have also been doing good. They're not getting nearly as much light as they could. I have these AI Vega colors cranked up to just about their max setting, but I'm not too concerned about it. The primary goal of this tank is to keep large fish happy and healthy. Let's go ahead and talk about the 480 gallon reef. Now the 480 gallon reef has been doing just amazing. I've only had a couple of minor issues in this tank. There's a little bit of cyano that's been growing on the sand during the day. I'm not too concerned about it. It goes away at night. It hasn't been getting more prominent. It's just been on the sand in a few areas, which isn't that big of a deal. I've also added some fish to the tank. I have a purple tang that was added to the 480 gallon reef which is them doing really good. Now, I have ick in my system, I know I do, and I got this purple tang knowing there was a good chance it was probably gonna come down with a pretty strong case of ick for a while. Did hold the fish in my quarantine tank for a bit, put it into the 480 gallon, and sure enough, it got a pretty severe outbreak of ick, but within a couple of weeks this fish has cleared up it's looking great it, the whole time it was eating healthy i feed a lot of nori i feed live mackerel algae i also feed a lot of live white worms lrs foods with probiotics and also feed a good variety of rods foods as well i really think that a healthy reef is extremely important for fish you have to remember in the wild all fish practically have parasites or some kind of disease is in the water and if it's a healthy environment and the fish have a strong immune system they have the ability to fight off these pests it's not a say that quarantine is not a good thing it's just a methodology that i've chosen to work with in this system knowing that there are always some risks most of my new fish go through a little quarantine period before getting into the main display I really do it on a fish by fish basis based on the species of the fish and some of the known vulnerabilities they have as far as carrying certain diseases. On the positive side though, the purple tank's doing great and it's been really thriving in this tank. Another addition to the 480 gallon, which unfortunately didn't make it, was a small flash of wrasse. I had it for a couple of weeks. It seemed like it was doing okay. It was getting slightly bullied and I don't know exactly what happened to this fish. I never found a body, uh, as you usually don't in a good reef tank. It gets consumed very quickly, but that did happen, unfortunately. The rest of the fish have been doing really good. I do have a couple of other additions to the tank. I added a small dragon face pipefish, and it's been kind of swimming around, doing pretty good in the tank. I also added a small blenny, which had a common name of a fringe lip blenny on it. It looks similar to an algae blenny, but it has some other interesting colors. I got those fish from Reef Plus as well. I also bought a pair of gold stripe maroons, which really didn't get purchased as a pair, but have kind of become a pair. The clownfish started to pair up. They're still not fully together yet. I think there's still a little bit of dating going on, but I think a marriage is soon coming with them. The only drawback that I've seen with keeping this paraclon so far is that my giant bubble coral has had about a third to half of it closing up lately. I believe that is because the clowns have attempted to host it from time to time. I'm not really sure as I haven't seen this happen. I've moved the bubble coral and in fact it had a couple of baby bubbles on the side of it which I clipped off and it put onto a couple of small rocks so I could try and make some more bubble corals that look just like that big cat's eye. 
Other than that, all the corals in the tank have been doing really good. The clams have been thriving. I've been very happy with everything going on. The alkalinity is still holding around 8.3 to 8.6. The calcium is still a little bit high on the 500 range. And the magnesium is holding right around 1400 at this point. It started to fall down a little bit from where it was. But the water's been holding good. As I said, nitrates and phosphates are also holding at a zero level. Even though I know they're in the tank as I feed this tank very heavy. I did, however, run into a couple of minor equipment glitches. And these aren't anything serious and through observation and of course through learning about this system as I have it over time, I found these problems. The first one arose with my calcium reactor. And I found this was a very interesting little problem. This is my first calcium reactor and I'm really kind of learning the ropes with it still. And I definitely learned a couple of small valuable lessons. The first thing that happened is my pH probe one day got stuck at 6.66 and while that's not a bad pH to be at the pH in that calcium reactor will tend to kind of move with the pH of the main display it moves from about 7.9 to a little over 8.0 throughout the day and knowing that the calcium reactor tends to have a curve that's kind of similar it'll rise up a little bit during the day tend to fall at night the only other thing that will adjust it from rising and falling is the amount of water flow dripping out of the reactor itself. And when I saw this pH get stuck at 6.66 for a day, I thought that was odd. I went over and I took the pH probe and I just loosened it up ever so slightly and just kind of jiggled it around a little bit. I felt that there might have been a CO2 bubble on the probe somewhere, kind of making it stick to a value that it really wasn't true. And after I did that, the pH did move around a little bit, but the next day the pH started to climb very rapidly up to 7.7. .7. And I really didn't understand why. I was at work when it happened, I was just watching the apex graph. I get home, I come downstairs, I look at the tank, see that the drip rate on the calcium reactor hasn't moved, which is good. I see that my carbon doser is still flashing and has pressure as it should. Then I looked at the bubble counter and noticed there was no bubbles coming out. Then I looked at the CO2 line below the bubble counter and saw that water had intruded about one foot into that line, which told me that my check valve failed. And since there was water in there, the pressure from the reactor must have been a little bit greater than that of the regulator up until it stopped. Now I keep the full length of the CO2 line on there. I keep it coiled up the bottom precisely for this reason. If seawater gets to your carbon dose regulator, it will be damaged and it's not warranty for that, which is why I kept that extra length. I moved the tube up rather high to make it difficult for this to happen. And once I removed that check valve, I found that it was stuck in a closed position. It wasn't opening. I went ahead and gave it a vinegar bath and, you know, moved the action a few times just by blowing air through it, make sure it was good, reattached it, turned everything back on the way it was, and it's been working flawlessly ever since. I think now knowing this, I'm probably going to remove that check valve every month or two just to give it a quick vinegar bath and make sure there's no mineral deposits growing on it. And since then, the calcium reactor has been functioning just as it should, and I've been very happy with it. The second minor equipment glitch that I had was on the protein skimmer. Now, I run two Jabo 15,000 pumps. It's an older version of this pump, and they drive the needle wheel air injection into this skimmer. Now, I clean the skimmer twice a week, and I noticed after last Sunday that the skimmer really wasn't producing much in the way of foam. I didn't really think much of it at the time, but when it came to the middle of the week and it was time for a cleaning, I noticed I really didn't have any skimmate in the cup, and I usually have about a quarter to a half inch of skimmate in there. There was a lot of foam built up in the neck of the skimmer, but it wasn't really getting pushed out. I didn't understand what was going on exactly. I went ahead, turned the pumps off, did a cleaning on the skimmer cup, and then when I came back, I tried to plug in each pump individually and noticed one of them was not functioning. 
Now I do have all the indicator LEDs on these pumps blacked out as I tend to do a lot of bioluminescence viewing at night and those lights interfere with it so they're taped off. I removed the electrical tape, found one of the pumps wasn't working. I ended up finding the DC plug for the controller was loose and just not fitting well. I managed to kind of rig it by wrapping the cord a certain way and that cleared up the issue of the pumps running. I did, however, order a spare JVO DCP 15,000, which is the newer model version. It looks like my DIY needle wheel impeller will also fit on this model, so I'm not too concerned there. And I'm gonna have that pump as a spare on standby for whenever I need it. Other than those couple minor glitches though, the fish room's doing great. The 150 gallon refuge is just packed with all kinds of hair algae, chato, and calerpa. I've been pulling out at least a good fistful of algae every week. I've been trying not to pull out too much as I wanna keep a good base in there. But so far, it's been doing great. That UFO refugium light is just growing Chato in a, a thin sheet like crazy. And I could be happier with its performance. I might add a second UFO light in the near future if I can't get the algae in the 720 gallon under complete control. But I want to give these things time. I really want to play a delicate balancing game with this. That's the update I wanted to give on the 1600 gallon system today. I know it was a long video, but there was a lot to talk about, and I'm really happy with the way the system is progressing. If you liked today's video, go ahead, give me that thumbs up. Let me know that you like the content. If you have comments or questions on the 1600 gallon system, any of the tanks, inhabitants, equipment, whatever you want to ask me about, let me know in the comments down below. And if there's some topic that you'd like me to talk about, go ahead and put that down below too. I might just make a video about it. And if you want to see more on the 1600 gallon system in its journey go ahead hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell notification thanks again for watching everybody and i'll see you on the next video